And before I continue on to this story, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a warning because this is going to contain some seriously dark subject matter. Like maybe more darker than any other story that I have covered here in the animation podcast. What I'm about to talk about here will contain some subjects that includes sexual harassment, a lot of abuse, and also some sexual contact, both uh, consensual and non-consensual, with minors. So if you're the kind that cannot stand hearing these things, then I suggest you run away right now. This is definitely not for you. And like I said before, this thing is gonna get heavy. However, if you are brave enough to continue listening on to this, then um, get ready because things are about to get really wild and not in a good way. And who I'm going to be talking about is going to be another sexual predator within the animation industry. However, this one is a lot more infamous about it. This is not the first time that this story has been covered before, but this is the first time that this story has been covered this way, going deep into these details. And honestly, in terms of many of the other sexual predator stories that I've heard, I don't know if there's anything that can really top this one because this is at the level where this is seriously messed up. And honestly, this is the kind of stories that really you're going to look at what I'm about to say or you're going to hear what I'm about to say. And this is going to make John Lasseter's hugs look comfortable. And the best way to describe it is think about the accusations done to Loud House creators, uh, Loud House creators Chris Savino and really crank that up to 11 where you can get a little bit more insane than that. And who I am talking about, of course, is John Chris Falusi, also known as John K. Now, before I get into the actual story, for those of you who don't know who John K is, John K has been known in the animation industry to create the Ren and Stimpy show. And he is also very well known for his beyond over the top art style which actually makes him one of the most influential animators in the modern era and from there not only will you find many different artists and animators who would cite john k as a major influence but you will find that some of the biggest animated series nowadays are actually heavily inspired by his works and ren and stimpy and these would include Adventure Time, Rick and Morty, SpongeBob SquarePants, and many, many more. However, the one thing about John K that people may not know about is how he is behind the scenes. And my God, there's a major story. So let's go ahead and get right down to it. BuzzFeed has recently released an article telling the story of Robin Bird and Katie Rice, whom both of which have a special relationship with John Kay when they were teenagers and when John Kay was in his late 30s and early 40s. And when I mean relationship, it can legitimately go into that kind of relationship. Now, I'll do my best to describe the article, but... Um, I do highly encourage that you guys should actually read this article for yourself. It's a very tough read, but it's a very necessary read as well. So basically the whole summary of this, or uh, my best summary that I can do, is that uh, Robin Bird and Katie Rice, they have known John Kay personally throughout their teen years. And uh, the interesting thing to mention about each of them is that Robin Bird... Uh, and Katie Rice, they've always aspired to work in the animation industry and they were huge fans of Ren and Stimpy and they personally contacted John Kay about their love for Ren and Stimpy and that they love his work and stuff like that and John Kay, he promised them to get into the animation industry like when they're 18 that they'll they'll put them in their first steps to go and actually work for him and to 
really get into the animation world and on top of that like while they're at it he can help them grow as artists to really make their craft a whole lot better but throughout that entire process there are some things that John K would start to get a little bit more personal with them and really start to get into the creepy factor when John K would actually be a lot more sexually attracted to them. And in fact, with Robin Bird, she would actually be in a relationship with John K starting at the age of 15. And it would actually go pretty far to the point that yes, they would actually have sex and like apparently she started having sex with John K when she was 16, but it's more John K get having wanting sex with Robin more so than Robin wanting sex with uh, John K in this case. And from there they would tell their stories about how it is being in a relationship with uh, John K, like how it is as either just friends or as an actual couple. And they would tell them about some of his more abusive and some of his more uh, harassing nature. How he really is sexually preying on them, even as just minor teenagers. And even at one point, Robin actually did state, or actually there was another, anim uh, another animator that once worked with John K, that he would go and talk to him and John K would show a whole series of pictures of Robin Bird and some of them are more explicit. I think that's the best way to put it that uh, a lot more sexual and a lot more explicit and like he, it's John, John K would show that he is very proud of that and even with Katie um, ever since she started ever since she started working for John K like you could tell he's a lot more abusive he would constantly sexually harass the women that's all around him especially with Robin and um, Katie and both of which coincidentally enough they would both completely break any sort of relationship with John K in the early 2000s where I believe uh, it is uh, Robin Bird who decided to completely leave the animation industry and would go to be a philosophy teacher while Katie she's still in the animation industry she's still working in animation with the help of uh, John K but it, well what I mean is that she's not working for John K now but because of John K she is actually living her dream as a teenager working within the animation industry so they would really go deep into their relationship how it is working with John K and how he is in his personal life and some of the more disturbing elements like uh, how like well, mo mostly looking into his dark sexual fantasies and even at one point I think it's uh, with Katie where she was working on the Weird Al music video of uh, Close But No Cigar but then she would go onto John K's computer and she would actually find some child pornography which absolutely shocked her. I think Robin also knew about his uh, child pornography as well. But yeah, they tried reporting to they they tried reporting to the police but uh so far nothing has really happened so far. Now, interestingly enough, in this article right over here, they also mention about his perspective as well from John Kay, but not necessarily from John Kay himself. It was an attorney that spoke for John Kay, how he was very well aware that in the past he had a serious mental illness and that today he is doing his best to make himself a little bit more better. So he is trying to improve on his totally sick nature from the past. At least that's what the attorney is trying to say. But long story short, the article revealed the story about Katie Price and Robin Bird and how they legit had a relationship with John Kay or kind of a relationship or a legitimate relationship or any of that kind of stuff and really go into 
his dark side, his sexual side, his harassing side. Basically, his whole dark side in general. And honestly, when I read this article, yeah, it really is heavy, but personally, my only thought when reading this was just that the only thing that I was surprised about is the fact that this hap that that this thing didn't happen anytime sooner. Because honestly, the thing is John K is actually pretty well known for this even before this BuzzFeed article came out. In fact, not many people were really surprised about this. Most of what the article is saying is nothing really new because people are very well aware about John K's abusive nature and his little creepy side that he might have a thing for minor girls. And the funny thing is that while there are many people out there who are huge fans of John K's works, you're not going to find many people who are fans of working with John K. Considering that he does have a history of being very abusive to his employees. And when it comes to women, well, <laughs> yeah, you got the big uh, portfolio right over here of John K being abusive to his employees. Now, let's take a look at the bigger folder that we have here that has uh, the entire history of him harassing women that worked for him or just in freaking general. And even in terms of the thing with uh, his turn on with minors and stuff like that, that is kind of well known as well. In fact, uh, there is actually something right over here uh, in the article that did actually mention that I believe there was a book or something like that that said something about Ren and Stimpy, or I, I think it's a book, or it's either like a book or a video. Okay, yeah, no, 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 I found the, uh, yeah, I found it right over here. Uh, it says, although sexual abuse allegations against Chris Velucci have never been made public before, his relationship with Bird has been an open secret within animation. So open that a girl he has been dating since she was 15 years old was referred briefly in a book about the history of Ren and Stimpy. So people are very well aware of that. And even when it comes to John K himself, he doesn't really make it that much of a secret where he is actually quite turned on to girls that are under the age of 18. In fact, there was actually um, a little radio show with Howard Stern. Well, okay, How Howard Stern doesn't have a little radio show, but um, he was in an interview with Howard Stern during the mid-90s, and they were talking about one of the characters that he created called Sody Pop. And the way that um, Howard Stern described her is like, yeah, you, you know, she's a hot chick, she's got big cans, she's got nice legs, you know, she's a pretty hot babe. And John K tried to add in to her sexiness, like he was just leaning on the mic, just pretty much saying, One of them's a hot chick with hey big God. cans <laughs> and nice legs. Who drew that, you? She's underage, too. Yeah, very oh. nice. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Hey oh. Hey oh. Could hey Billy hey work now. on that one? And like then afterwards, he would just nod, like, yeah, you know, that's another thing that makes her sexy. And you know, I'm just there thinking, What? No! Dude! R really? That's what you add to the factor of her sexiness? Because that's the crazy thing with Sody Pop. Like, if you go on to Google Images and you look for the different pictures of the character that he actually drew himself, there's a lot of lewd and erotic pictures that include Sody Pop where you actually do see her boobs, like nipples and all. And if your intentions are to make like a 15 or 16 year old girl with her, I don't think that should be something on the internet or something you should do or something that you should be public about. I mean, seriously, like, you know, I don't have anything against you if you're more open to what make you know, what makes you turned on on either a guy or a girl, you know? Like, even with me, like, I, I don't mind that people know that, you know, I, I, like, I do have a little thing with girls or even, um, 
top heavy women per se <laughs> but the thing is with this is that if you're going to be open to something that is not only considered uh like looked down upon in society but especially something that is illegal like being you know being attracted to girls that you shouldn't think sexually about like that they would be like 14 15 or 16 th that's honestly it's just wrong but going back into the subject right over here uh, going into like what this BuzzFeed article is about, the only thing that it really is new that they added into this whole story with John Kay, even though people are very well aware about John Kay's abusive nature and his thing for minor girls, what this added is really the details, how deep the rabbit hole can go. And um, especially the fact that we got the perspective of two girls that really do have a major relationship, a personal relationship with John Kay, like with Robin, Robin Bird actually being an ex of John Kay when she was dating him when she was a teenager and he was like a 40 year old man. And then you got Katie Price who wanted to go in to the animation business and John Kay was a major help to that. But one thing that really is sad about it is that you can tell how much of a predator that John Kay really is because throughout the most part in the article you can see how John Kay really does take advantage over these girls how they are at a low point in their life or how they are easily influential like I think it was with Rice where she was pretty much down on her luck she was moving into a new place and she didn't get accepted to a college or an art college and stuff like that. It's either Bird or Robin. And, you know, she didn't really have that much friends. But she trusted John Kay because he was her only friend. And she he was the only person that she could trust. And the same thing can be said with uh, Robin. That, honestly, throughout the whole thing, she was mostly so fixated on trying to be in the animation business that John Kay really was the key for her to actually get in and to have like an internship at Spumco and to actually work for him. And it really spiraled to the point where she really did play, like he really did play with her emotions. And she actually stated that John K as a boyfriend, sure, he'll like her personality and he'll like her body, but he doesn't give a crap about her emotions, which honestly, when you're in a relationship, that really is a major key, you know, to be in a good relationship. You have to care about the emotions of your partner. And that is something that John K just absolutely doesn't care about. You know, he likes that, you know, he likes that he, you know, he likes that she's a, a, a smart, intelligent girl with a hot body, even though that is a body that you should not touch yet. But he, whatever, how she feels and stuff like that, he doesn't care one bit. And honestly, that, like, just reading all this, yeah, it is absolutely disgusting. That really does show how... John K really is a monster that does take advantage over minor girls and we never truly know how deep this rabbit hole goes. Now, some of these like they're not truly confirmed as of yet. There are some things that uh the attorney has denied including how John K has owned some actual child porn but then again if it actually is true then at, at this point nobody would really be that surprised about. And I know that for some people, it really is conflicting to hear about this news story, considering that, like I said before, John Kay is a major influence in the animation industry. And some people would look up to him as one of the most inspiring people in the industry. In fact, some people could even say that he was the closest thing to Tex Avery after Tex Avery passed away. And I mean, at this point, we really cannot deny the influence that he has done in animation, where we could see the elements that were based on stuff like Ren and Stimpy uh, onto 
whatever piece of animation that you could find nowadays, rather it be in animated features, in TV shows, or even in internet videos, that's probably uh, one of the most influential places that you can actually go and find where I remember Aaron Hansen, aka Eagle Raptor, mentioned that one of his biggest inspirations uh, to be, oh, what was it? Yeah, like one of his inspirations to be an animator is actually the works of John Kay. Now, of course, I'm not saying that Aaron is a total John Kay fan. Like, he has expressed that he is not a fan whatsoever of how John Kay is as a person being abusive to his employees and, uh, you know, being sexually attracted to minor girls. But it's an example to show how people are massively influenced with the works of John Kay. And it even did mention right over here regarding the importance of separating the art from the artist and how people who have worked with John Kay, they would immediately say that, yes, of course, like if they ever get an award, then one of the first people that they will thank is actually John Kay because they like his works and working with him really did help them throughout their animation career. But him as a person is, some, is someone that you must avoid at all cost. So that really is the big thing. If you guys are major fans of Ren and Stimpy or if John Kay inspired you to get into animation, then that's perfectly okay. That shouldn't stop you from either enjoying Ren and Stimpy or from citing John Kay as an inspiration because really what you are in love with in that direction would be his works, his TV shows, his art style. And that is perfectly okay because the influence that he has done there, it is legendary. But what he has done to people individually, that's when it's wrong. That is when it should be looked down upon. So again, like the case like with John Lasseter or Chris Savino, like if you are major fans of like Toy Story or The Loud House, that is perfectly okay. But it is highly important to separate the art from the artist because at that point, like I can understand that you would have some massive conflicts and people would not know what to do with themselves if either they should no longer watch Ren and Stimpy or stuff like that. And honestly, like, I do understand the pain and the confusion going on right over there, but yeah, um, that's basically my easy answer with this one is try to really learn to separate the art from the artist, that you can support the art style of John Kay, but not John Kay himself. And yeah, honestly, this has been something that was a long time coming, and really, I just want to congratulate uh, Robin Bird and Katie Price for being so brave to actually come out and actually describe their story. And I know this was something that really wasn't easy because even in the article right over here, they would even mention how for a long time they have been scared to actually stand up and tell their story considering that they're just afraid of the backlash from the fans of John K. They don't know how they would react. But considering that we are in the age of the hashtag MeToo movement, it definitely was something that did inspire them and go speak out regarding their story, which honestly should have been brought out a long time ago. But the important thing is that I really am glad that Robin Bird and Katie Price did actually bring out their story to tell the truth regarding their relationship with John Kay and how John Kay truly is as a person so what are going to be the consequences to john k in that department we'll just have to win see with what the future holds but yeah honestly overall this was something that was a long time coming